My name is Marilyn Dash and I race in the biplane class up at Reno and today we're at my home airport and this is Hayward, California. I started flying in 1999, but the story goes back about a year. I was driving up the freeway and saw a big sign outside an airport that said volunteers needed. Apparently Stan Hiller was putting together his new aviation museum at San Carlos Airport and they were looking for volunteers. So I, for several months I worked with Stan and every day I talked to him, all he did was say, when are you going to become a pilot? When are you going to become a pilot? So finally I took the step and went over to the local flight school and took my first lesson and that was just about 11 years ago. When I was a student pilot, I went to a school called Diamond Aviation and Karen Morris was the owner and, uh, and den mother of the Diamond Aviation. Karen is the wife of Dave Morris. We went up that year to watch him race and that was the first time I'd ever been exposed to the uh, Reno Air Races. And I remember sitting up in the stands and thinking to myself, this is so cool, I've got to do this. When it comes to racing, it's Dave Morris, it's Rick Vandom, who was my air boss when I first started out racing, and uh, there's a few other names that I would throw in there. You kind of had a special relationship with Al Goss. Can you tell me a little Very bit about that? Very much so. I, I called him Papa Goss, and he was, uh, he, I call him my flying father. And um, he was someone who, after I met him in 2004, after my, my first year racing, he was always there with a pat on the head or a scowl, depending on how I did in the race. And um, our friendship grew to the point where I started going to the house quite often, and I would spend weekends with him and his fiance. And I just felt so lucky and so blessed to have him as part of my life. He just had a way of, you know, taking you aside and telling you things without making you feel, you know, that you made a mistake, but it was a learning experience. Uh, his loss to me is just devastating. So my first real race was in 04, so this will be my seventh year, I think. <laughs> that seems like a long time. I think that I'm getting more confident in my airplane over the years, and then, um, unfortunately, I'm not getting much faster because we just don't have the cubic dollars to make it faster. So that's one thing about racing. It's, it takes uh, not just effort on the pilot's part, but it takes a lot of money to put some modifications on the airplane. It was uh, built in 1974. It's been rebuilt twice since then. It's my little sweetheart. It's now an experimental exhibition, but the, at one time it was a certified airplane building being factory built. So because we changed out the gear, we changed out the propeller, the engine, and the wing, it's now an experimental exhibition airplane and its sole use for air shows and racing. Swiss Salvage raced her at Reno back in the, I'm going to say 80s, late 80s, early 90s maybe, and it raced as Slick, number two, and then I bought it from West back in 03, and um, so she's, and changed it to number four, which he's not, he also says that it's a boy and I say it's a girl. Wes Salvage um, was just one, a great guy and I was just thrilled to get her because she's just a beauty as you can see. I keep wondering what I did on my weekends and what, you know, what I spent my time doing before I started racing and started flying aerobatics or started flying at all because it's totally changed my life. If you look on your, on your cell phones and you look at the last 10 phone calls that you've made, I realize that probably seven to eight of them every day are people I've met through aviation and who are now very close friends of mine in some way or another. And my life has completely changed. I'm pretty much in the back of the pack, so I'm in the, in the bronze or in the back of the silver at this point. And, um, you know, the, pretty much anybody up there that's not in the top in the gold would be my competition. And so basically it's a lot of single seat pits and a couple of Smith minis and the Mongs are usually up front because for some reason they're a little bit slicker. We have uh, two other women that are qualified to race in the biplane class and that's uh, Casey Erickson. She's uh, race number eight and then we have Leah Summers. Uh, both of them are very good competitors and very good pilots and uh, I'm just thrilled that uh, they, they feel comfortable enough to come out to the biplane class. Formula One and biplanes are a really good place for entry-level racers. You know, if you, most of the people out there that are going to see this or go to the Reno website are not going to be able to go out and buy a, a, a sporty P51 and race in the Unlimited class right away. So this is a really good way for them to get, uh, get exposure to it, see if they really like it. So I find that um, the women are, are, will be found in the Formula One and in the biplane class. Of the, all the classes, the biplane class has attracted the most women over the years that I've been there. Um, I have a very close-knit crew, and uh, we talk probably three, four times a week. I mean, we're, we're in, on the phone all the time, and we're no longer just crew. We're friends. So we talked about the changes that we want to make. We have some parts that are coming in, and we should get that done. We also have a little memorial to Al that we want to do for the plane. So we're, we're working on that as well. 
People don't realize how early that we have a pilot brief at seven. We're usually pushing the airplanes out at quarter to eight. We either have an eight o'clock or an 8.20 time on the uh, course. So we're just, everything just happens very, very early for us. And so people are always like, come on, you want to go out to dinner with us tonight? I'm like, actually, I have to be in bed by 10. And people are so surprised by that because apparently they think we're a bunch of party animals and there's just no time for it. You know, my number one priority while I'm there is to race. I'm just fascinated by the racing itself. It's fun to watch the people and watch the characterizations and, and to watch the racing itself. So for me, it's, it's not just biplanes for me, it's everything. I started out as a fan. So, you know, I went to the races just loving it, eating it up and just, you know, jumping up and down. I, I remember being at the Cheerman's Club when, uh, you know, at, at the end of the goal in 2007 and jumping up and down on a chair and screaming like a crazy person. I'm like, what the heck is taking over here, you know? For people who haven't been there yet, what's taking you so long? You gotta go. It's just, the, you know, the fact that they keep the pits open and that we can go, the normal people, just fans, can walk through and watch them changing the headers out and taking pistons out and looking at what the spark plugs look like. I mean, to me, that's that's part of it. And learning about what, you know, you go into the Formula One hangar and you see them taking wings off and, you know, just doing so much work and you see us in the biplane and we're just w wiping, you know, bug smudges off our planes. But there's just so much going on. It's just, it's fascinating. Let's see. Last year wasn't a great year for us. Can we talk about like the year that I really enjoyed? <laughs> so yeah, we were, you know, we were back, back in the middle of the pack somewhere, you know, uh, I think we came in seventh in the silver and then they needed us to do some filler in the bronze. So I think I came in something in, something in the bronze, which didn't matter, but I was seventh in the silver, which did. This is a two, goal airplane for me. It's an aerobatic competitor as well as a racer. So I have to make sure that whatever I do to make it faster doesn't ruin the aerobatic nature of the airplane because I still plan on doing competitions again. So um, I, doing little tweaks and doing things that can be easily taken off the airplane, those are the types of things I'm looking at. We're looking at um, doing some work on the propeller and some no front end work to make the, the, it's a smaller footprint. And uh, we're doing, like I said, a little memorial to Al Goss and, uh, in our wheel pants. So that should, that should be a fun little thing to, to look at. And uh, that's pretty much it. We're hoping to break the 180, 190 mile an hour. I just, you know, I really wanted to stress how uh, Reno puts together a great show and it's run like clockwork from the first from eight o'clock in the morning to last racer on deck and if you guys you know I'd love to see more people come out to the races this year locals to Reno people from all over the country all over the world this is the only place this happens and it's worth it's worth worth the trip believe me <laughs> <laughs>